let's handle some validation on our address input fields. We're going to do this the template kind of way where all of our logic goes into the template. Notice that even though we did the model driven way, we can still write a lot of our logic in the template if we choose to. And then after we do this, we'll look at a way where we can clean up the template again and move all of that logic back into the class. Let's figure out what our form control and our form group looks like. If we just start typing in one of these and submit, we can see that we have our form, we have addresses, name, username, and each of those. But what's interesting to look at is our overall form group, which gives us all of the different methods and inputs and properties on our form. We're looking at our overall form, we're looking at the controls inside of that form, the addresses, inside of the addresses, the controls again, and then inside of that form group, the controls again, and the city. And this is where we'll finally find the errors. This here is what we're going to dig down to to display errors inside of our template. This is nested pretty far down in our form, so just bear with me when we write this out. We'll go into the HTML. Underneath city, we're going to have our span class help block again. And then inside of here, we only want to show this if, actually let's move this out to a new line since this is going to be a little long, form.controls.addresses.controls, and we want to use the index for those controls so we can get the first group or the second group. And then inside of that, we want the controls again, since we're finally in the form group. Inside of that, we will grab the city. And then now that we finally have that form control in our grasp, we can look into that errors attribute. So we only want to show this if the form control, the city form control for this specific address has any errors, and form.controls.addresses.controls i. Just like we did earlier in this course, we only want to show this error message if there are errors and this input field is dirty. Once that's finally there, we can say city is required. We'll copy the same thing for country. And that will be good enough to add validation to our fields. Let's give that a try. Type into it, remove it, type into it, remove it. Try another one. All right, we have validation for our form array, our form, gr form groups inside of those arrays, and the form controls inside of that form group. While this is going to get the job done, this isn't really the best way to do things since if we wanted to add another validation rule here, let's say min length is equal to three, then we would have to do in here, we would have to do another span ng if form.controls.addresses. So we would check for the required, and then we would do the same for min length. We don't really want to do anything like this. We don't want to convolute our template code that much more. So we'll remove all this, go back to the way it was, remove this validation, and we're back to square one. In the next lesson, just like we did in the earlier model-driven forms, we're going to move this validation logic out of the template and into our class. In addition to validate form, we're going to have a validate addresses method as well.